short segment that you just heard was recorded yesterday. Now we're here in the venue where we just walked to yesterday in our little pre-recorded segment. Welcome to the show. And now we are ready for our round one feature match. In the red corner, we have from Canada, all the way from Canada, Chessie Cotton. Good morning. How was your travel? Uh, it was good. It yeah. was good? Like relatively good or was it really good? Uh, it was really good. Uh, for once, I got to sleep on my flight, which is nice. All right. So, uh, Chessie, of course, is a back-to-back -back world competitor, so one of the most experienced players that we have in the event this weekend. Definitely one of the favorites this weekend. How are you feeling about your round one feature match? Uh, feeling confident. All right. <laughs> Ever a little bit? Are you tired or you're 100% sharp now? Uh, I think I'm, I'm good right now. I'm not feeling really jet lagged. Okay. So, so Chessy is ready to get his game on. Please have a seat in the red chair. And his opponent is from the UK. So basically, if you're rooting for the UK, if you're from one of the locals here, you should be rooting for Matthew Thumbstone. Good morning. Um, how was your travel here? Um, I traveled by train from Tutbury. All right, and you're now going up against Chessy Cotton. Uh, are you a bit nervous or are you like, okay, I'm going to crush this guy? Quite nervous since this is my first tournament. Your first tournament, like at the YCS stage, basically? Yeah. But I can tell you with confidence, uh, we've seen this before. We've seen some of the most experienced players. Sometimes they get cocky. He doesn't seem cocky right now, but we never know. He tries to be humble. He tries to be humble. He didn't say he is humble. He tries to be humble. So I, I would say I'm rooting for you. Sorry, Chessie. Okay. All right, so please have a seat. And um, these are our players for the round one feature match. You guys must have noticed I didn't say anything about decks or strategies or stuff like that. Because for that, we of course have our caster team. This weekend, it's going to be Tom Galizia together with Tom Payne. So let's take you guys over to the table of our casters for the event. Hello and welcome to YCS London. I'm, I'm Dom Galizia, I'm here with Tom Payne and we're excited for this match. We've got Jesse Cotton all the way from Canada and Matthew Thompson, he's local, as previously mentioned by Ollie. Let's, ha let's have a little look at their decks, Tom. What are we thinking, uh, um, in particular, it looks like Jesse's playing the Danger deck there. The Danger Dark World FTK deck, yeah, so it was quite popular in YCS Niagara and I think people weren't sure whether it was going to be the same good choice as it was over there for over here because mm. we're missing a key combo piece which is summon sorceress okay so all of the pieces to do the FTK are still there so we still have cannon soldier we still have grapher we still have firewall dragon but summon sorceress helps you assemble the FTK with a lot of consistency so we're Summon's wondering whether it's gonna keep the consistency yeah summon sorceress of course is that powerful extra deck monster yeah, very, very powerful card. Very powerful card. But looking at Matthew's deck, he's playing quite a versatile deck. He, he seems to be a big fan of the anime here. He's playing cards like Red Eyes um, and Dark Magician. UFO Turtle is in there as well. He's got some Grave Keepers in there as well. Did Yugi play UFO Turtle at any point, or am I making that up? Um, I th I'm Maybe not sure. Not. I'm not going to say on camera whether or not he did, but for sure it looks like uh, Matthew's a big fan of the anime. He's he, As I said, it's... Noticeable with Red Eyes, Black Dragon, and Dark Magician. Those are Red iconic. Eyes, Black Dragon at the top of the deck list. There. It's almost like he was waiting to see Joey at this event. <laughs> so I, I think I think Matthew's here to have some fun. He he mentioned that he's that it's his first tournament coming to a YCS. That's impressive. It shows a lot of character. He's he's up against a, a world championship competitor. So yeah, let's see let's see how they get on. I guess. Yeah. Just gonna carry on looking through. And yes, please. <laughs> Do we know who's starting? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Are they going to play rock, paper, scissors? So they're just loading in, in, um, into the game now. It does say in the official rule book that you're supposed to play rock, paper, scissors. To yeah, I mean, starts. that is an amazing rule. It's, it's, still the official, it's still the official standpoint that you would begin to determine who goes first with that rock, paper, scissors. I mean, according to, uh, I had a chat with Luke Parks who went to the World Championships and he said that OCG players insisted upon playing rock, paper, scissors. Yes, yes, it's still very common. I was at the World Championships this year. I was fortunate enough to see some of those games and I can, I can uh, tell you that you can rock, verify. paper, scissors <laughs> was, was used to determine the, 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 the match starter. Oh, we're getting the hands loaded in now. Great. Yes, so we can see that um, Jesse's 
got that danger dog man. He's got a couple of brow huntsmen of Dark World. Beginning the of the end is one of my favourite cards. I actually played it in uh, YCS here with Burning Abyss like three years ago. Super cool. Drawing three cards is fun. And Matthew, he's got that token collector, Cynet si Refresh, Toll Hike, Gravekeeper Spiritualist, and Danger Dogman as well. Quite one some of the versatility. interesting things about the Danger deck is that you don't actually know how it's going to play out when you draw the hand. Because every time you <laughs> reveal a danger, you pick a random card in your hand. So that's the worst case scenario for Jesse there, where he's revealed the Dogman and the Dogman has hit itself. Um, and then he's revealed the Nessie and the Nessie's hit itself. Now Nessie's fine to hit itself because when it's discarded it just searches another danger you can try again. But Dogman, you really want the other effect. You really don't want it to discard itself because it, its discard effect is your opponent's monsters lose a thousand attack points. And when your opponent doesn't have any monsters that's not really what you're going for. Uh, but Nessie's kind of fine because you just get another danger and, and try again which is what's going on now. And oh wow. Matthew's doing exceptionally well on the dice roll here. He's hit <laughs> three out of three danger monsters. So Beginner's luck, maybe? Beginner's luck, yeah. So when Mothman is discarded, its discard effect allows you to draw and discard... Both players, in fact, to draw and discard one. So and he's I set the beginning of the end. Is he has. So he didn't want to discard it with his danger effect. Exactly. By mistake, yeah. Just wanted to reiterate as to why he would do that straight off. Indeed. It is strange to set cards, set normal spells... So it looks like Jesse's opening turn has, has flopped a little bit due to a bit of bad luck on the side of his danger monsters not resolving. He summons the Armageddon Knight, though. Yeah, Armageddon Knight was drawn off brow, I think. Armageddon Knight is a really powerful card at the moment. It's one of those cards as well. It seems to always come back. Um, oh, it's amazing. It's yeah, I love it. It's a really versatile card. It's been around a long time, but it sees a lot of play in a lot of decks over yeah. the years. So, I mean, it, in this deck, it's be, you can use it to send uh, Shadow Beast or Blackwing Zephyrus, I think, is the more popular option. Um, but at the moment, it's being used a lot to send cards like Destiny Hero Malicious or the Phantom Knights. It's got, it's got you know... There's always been dark monsters which do well in the graveyard. So Jesse's been able to continue his combos by drawing the another danger monster. And this time he's been successful with the Dogman, fortunately for him. Yeah, so he's going to get to draw one for Dogman and one for Brow. And there's the Soul Charge. So it looks like despite flopping on, on the first the couple rolls. of danger ones... Yeah. The deck's still going to be powerful. I mean, he has drawn Soul Charge, which is obviously a very powerful card, but it is looking like... And he's looking confident now. He he's going like to resolve his uh, FTK, probably. Um, so this deck, although it doesn't have Summon Sorceress, it does have Curious, which if it, does, it serves a similar purpose of searching out the last combo piece. Um, so what the... Um, the Summon Sorceress, to my mind, is just better because it puts that combo piece on the field. And although you can't use the effect of the combo piece, if it's a Dark World monster, you don't actually need the effect. You just need a Dark World monster on the field to bounce for Graffer. Or if it's a Graffer, again, you don't need the effect. But you can just use it as a link material, which is very helpful. Yeah, as mentioned, Jesse's looking pretty comfortable right now. Yeah. He's He looked confident as soon as, you know, that, that Dogman hit the field. And he's just going through the... The deck now. Here comes the first yeah, this, link monster. This deck could actually like go through its entire deck very consistently. Yes, it's very very resourceful, isn't it? It's so I'm guessing this is going to be used to send. Well, it's going to definitely be sending Graffer or Cannon Soldier, um, and that looks like a Cannon Soldier to me, or the Toon Cannon Soldier. Interesting decision to run Toon Cannon Soldier over Cannon Soldier. What do you think of that? I really, I'm a big fan of the Toon monsters, See, so. But I, I, it I is fun. They're they're almost the same. But to my mind, you can attack with Cannon Soldier, and you can't attack with Toon Cannon Soldier. So if you want to be a really boring person who runs the better card, then it's the traditional. Then it should be the Cannon Soldier. Exactly. However, it's probably more fun. Um, so I think his face down. So he doesn't even need the beginning of the end. I think Soul Charge just ends the game here. Yeah, it's a because, such uh, a great card. Soul Charge can pick up Armageddon Knight to send um, Graffa, a Dark World monster and a uh, cannon soldier, and that assembles all of the pieces he needs. So we'll, we'll see the 
combo in all of its glory now. So the um, one of the Armageddon Knights will send a Graffa, and then he will have assembled the Graffa, Cannon Soldier, and the Firewall Dragon, because he can just link some of the Firewall Dragon. I mean, all the while Matthew is looking and observing on. How, how do you feel he's feeling about this? Uh, can I mean you remember when, when your first tournament was and, and how you felt going into that and, and what this might feel for Matthew here being at a YCS uh, up against I this? I mean, my first tournament was a long time ago. And I sp it was long enough ago that things like this didn't happen so often. You know, I remember the, um, the demise, uh, King of Armageddon, OTK, and being kind of, you know, slightly outraged by, by that. But other than that, <laughs> the idea of not actually having a turn was not, um, not very prevalent. And we even see, just for an extra security measure here, the Elder Entity as a thought, which stops your opponent from using any monster effects. So in particular, there's no... Your Firewall Dragon can't be hit by something nasty like Gamma or Ogre or Effect Veiler or anything. So it can be stopped by Infinite Impermanence still. But other than that, you can't... So it just stops your opponent from holding the... Um, from holding a hand trap specifically for the Firewall Dragon. Because now they can't use... Unless it's literally Infinite Impermanence. So it's a real good protection card, basically. It's really, it basically means like if your hand is good enough, then you can just stop your opponent from using any hand traps. Brilliant. Which is pretty insane. So South. they have to use the hand trap before the Azathoth comes down. So I think I think Jesse's just explaining the combo to Matthew now. Could well be that, he's, yes. He, may, the first have, time he may have clocked. I don't think he's seen this before. That's my... Um, that. He's taking taking 500 damage a time. Let's hope he doesn't make him do it 20 times. It's not 20 you need, actually. That would be 10,000 damage. It's 16. 16. 16 tributes with Toon Cannon Soldier. One of my friends was uh, suggesting playing Shadow Priestess of Ohm instead, just for fun. Basically does the same thing as Cannon Soldier, but it only tributes dark monsters. And it looks like with that, that he takes that that first game so Jesse was in a strong position we, we felt from the from the beginning that he didn't get so lucky with the he rolls was, yeah I think drawing that soul charge really pulled it together so he was going to be able to resolve the beginning of the end to possibly continue but drawing the soul charge just kind of blows out of the water once so even though he was unlucky in the first instance to miss with the danger cards drawing soul charge makes really it made the, really made it, the hand live really yeah it just really pulled it together yeah. and allowed him to assemble his FTK pieces yeah, um, with, with the Dogman summon, he got the draw, and that yes, was and that was really good. Yes, the soul charge. I'm no. not, I'm not convinced that. Well, I mean, there's no reason for Jesse to side anything because he hasn't actually seen any of the cards that his opponent. He has playing. no knowledge, right? No, 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 his opponent discarded a card. I didn't actually. What did he discard? I'm not sure. He had, to, he had. Um, Jesse had to read it. <laughs> I didn't recognize the picture. <laughs> Yeah. I, it doesn't look like either players but have it wasn't to use the side deck at this point. Yeah, there wasn't excessive amounts of information for Jesse, though. So as you said already, he's probably really comfortable in just going to game two and seeing what seeing what Matthew has in his deck. I didn't look like Matthew has got... Well, it didn't look like he sided anything. No, I mean, he's got Gigantes and some old, older, really, like... Gigantes is pretty fun. It's a great card. I mean, I used to remember... It's quite fun to search off Block Dragon. Yeah, yeah. I used to play a lot of the um, older Earth Monsters, and Gigantes was one of them. I used to really enjoy playing that. It's quite good. You can make, like, Curious with it, because it's just a, it's another... It's a monster you can special summon. It's Earth. It's got the... Um, like, it's got... It's Rock type, which not that many monsters are. Yep. So, given you need monsters with different attributes. Oh, that's very helpful. So, the judges have now taken to putting a a dice in front of the first player to let so us and the viewers know. Exactly. So they're just drawing. They'll be loading those cards into the app for us in imminently. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I can like recognize Jesse's hand almost immediately because I know what all of the cards, like I know what cards I'm expecting to see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whereas the other cards I have to, I could, I could definitely see UFO Turtle. Uh, Great card. Great card that searches any fire monster yep. with fifteen hundred or less attack, and he sets quite a few um, cards to the field. There does Matthew three 
three into the spelling trap card zone and one face down monster into the field, which we know is the UFO turtle. And the only card left in his hand is the World Legacy um, World Shield monster. That is, that is probably one of the newer cards in Matthew's deck. Okay. Any interactions we're expecting from the field there for Matthew? Probably. Um, I don't actually know what Showdown of the Secret Sense Scroll does. So when your opponent a a activates a spell or trap card or monster effect with the same name as a card in their graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy the card. That could come up, because Jesse is definitely playing multiple copies of of all of the dangers, so he could use it at some point. Okay. And then Necro Fusion is used to fusion summon, right? I don't know what um, Matthew's attempting to fusion summon with Necro Fusion. Well, his extra deck, he has got six cards in the extra deck. Dark Rebellion, X XYZ Dragon, Dino Wrestler, Kinti Rexel. Ah, here we see Graffa actually using its discard effect. <laughs> there you go. I'm not sure anyone's done that for a while. Jesse's hand looks quite live again. Oh yeah. I so mean this this deck, like, it's got twenty some some very large number of danger cards. Um, and all the danger cards have almost the same well they have the one same effect which is really good. Uh, to reveal it and possibly discard another card and draw a card. So your hands are going to be exceptionally consistent because you've got over 20 cards which do exactly the same thing. And when you're building a Yu-Gi-Oh deck to be consistent, if I mean, 20 what of more them could you ask than yes. 20 of the same card? Yes. It's pretty insane. So Jesse's doing a bit better with his dice rolls this time round. He's not, he's not yet hit a danger with itself. Uh, yeah. So he's actually got the optimal scenario, which is hitting a, a different danger monster from your hand to yeah. trigger its discard effect. And now... I think it's fair to say Matthew is in danger here as well. He is in danger, yeah. Good one, Dom. <laughs> and there we see card destruction on the bottom of Jesse's deck. Card destruction. Great is card. A great card. Again, it one, is of, one those of the most powerful cards, I think. Yu-Gi-Oh has had. Yeah, and it's always been popular with the discard um, Dark World effects. And yes. Yes. Oh. Been around a long time again. It, I think it, it, In it's the original structure decks, right? It's. I feel like it's comparable to a lot of the cards. A lot of the banned normal spells, actually, is, is card destruction. And we just see Jesse. He's, he's looking super confident again. He's gone straight into that um, Curious again, is it? So, yeah, Curious is super, super easy to make in this deck. So it requires... Three monsters of the same type. No, the same attribute but different types. Yep. Which fortunately, all the danger monsters are all dark and all different types. So it's super easy to make. Yeah. It looks like he's sending Shadow Beast for an extra draw. And then you also get some bonus mills with uh, Curious. Typical Light Swan. Typical Light Swan, I know. They just can't help themselves from milling more cards. Uh, Very popular archetype lights so on. Been, been, been at the top quite a few times. Yeah. Maybe I got my. Uh, how does. What, what is the exact text of Curious say? I'm interested he drew before he milled. I'm not, is, that, is that correct? Yes, it is correct. Okay. Yeah, so Curious is. I thought. I, I, I guess I've just not used it enough recently, but. I, I thought that Curious is send a card and then mill three were the same effect, but they are separate effects. And the mill three is a mandatory effect. So when he forms the chain with the Shadow Beast and the Curious to send, then you send. You mu because the sending three is a mandatory effect, you have to put that as chaining one. So then Shadow Beast will go chaining two, so you'll draw and then mill. And then he has resolved the beginning of the end. Yes. Which is obviously an aptly titled card because it. Well, I suppose it's not really the beginning of the end, it's like halfway through the end. Um. Because you already have to have a lot of a lot of stuff going on to resolve the beginning of the end, but Was it's a pretty fun card. It draws you three more cards. Just a card saying draw three is is, is, is pretty, pretty fun. good. Yes, it's pretty good. 
So we might get to see the rank 7 XYZ monster, which I can never remember the name of. Do you know the name of it? No. It, it probably says, but Jesse's handwriting is bad enough. Tomahawk, that's it. I know it has some sort of ship name, you know. Galaxy Tomahawk, here we go. But I just never remember the name. I'm always like, Starship something, I don't know. But this guy spawns a load of tokens so you can do more link summoning. It's effectively turned his two level 7 monsters into four monsters. And um, as, as you mentioned already, they can act, they can be used as link materials. Yeah, well you can't attack with them, so... I uh, know, in fact, I think you just can't do any damage to your opponent via battle during the turn that you use the Tomahawk. Effect. Oh! Oh, that's cheeky. He's just negated his opponent's beginning of the end. <laughs> with showdown of the secret sixth sense scroll technique. Which is not, I bet, not something Jesse was expecting, you know? Yeah. What I would absolutely love to see is a copy of Mystical Ref Panel to be used on the beginning of the end. Counter trap, right? What does that? It is not a counter. It's, it's a normal trap. It's a normal trap. But it what? says to your opponent that they don't draw three, and instead you draw three. Oh, I remember it now. It's one of the secret rare. First game is a secret rare, right? Yeah, it was actually used in the first uh, YCS here because people were using um, dragon rulers. So in 2013, the meta was dragon rulers, and people were using lots of cards like. Uh, Sacred Sword of Seven Stars and Cards of Consonant. So there were potentially six very powerful cards which you could hit with Ref Panel to say to your opponent that instead of them drawing two, you draw two, and that's pretty cool. So it's a bit of a momentum changer. It's it's huge. It's it almost a card that you would say would flat out win the game if you resolved it. If you it. resolved it. Um, and kind of the fear of the card might make people want to not um, side out their like powerful draw cards. So we see Jesse going into more Link Monsters, as we anticipated with those tokens. Oh, yeah. Uh, and we How also see Jesse. I'm very disappointed in Jesse having just uh, just empty sleeves for his tokens. You know, I kind of expected more. Maybe some sheep tokens, maybe some YCS tokens. But he's just using empty sleeves. I think it's just a preference. Some you think people it's a preference? Yeah. I'm, I'm just disappointed, if I'm honest. So how much would that track card have interrupted what Jesse's doing right now? Well, do you think it's actually going to have a, an impact on the game? Could it could it really shift any momentum into Math in Matthew's I way? I am fully expecting Jesse to still assemble his win condition this turn. Okay. Once you get a combination of Firewall Dragon and Graffa and a Dark World, you effectively have sort of infinite link materials. Um, because the gra well, yeah, not necessarily infinite link materials, but infinite infinite tribute fodder because Graffa can bounce itself and then you can link away the Graffa. Sorry, Graffa doesn't bounce itself. It summons itself from the graveyard by bouncing a Dark World. And then you link away the Graffa um, and then Firewall summons the Dark World back again and then you bounce it for Graffa. So you just get, you could just get a continuous a, supply, just supply of continuous monsters, supply for, of monsters yeah. for link summoning. So the Toon Cannon Soldier is now in the graveyard. So what I'm expecting to see is some link summoning and he can actually make Nightmare Unicorn to spin the Firewall Dragon back to the extra deck. So then he'll be able to resummon it and reuse it to pick up the Toon Cannon Soldier from his graveyard. So that's what we're going to see now. So Unicorn is going to be used. It Also, it's a discard. Just just for extra fun, you get to discard... Um, oh, has he, uh, maybe he's already used Nessie. So the discard is a cost, and Dark World monsters do not trigger when they're discarded for cost. They only trigger when they're discarded for effects, of course. Yep. But the danger monsters don't care. They just care that they're discarded. And he's also going to get a draw as well to top it off. Yeah, it's really impressive how much resource um, Jesse has and how, how he's just, as you said, going through that deck. He's getting every piece. He's assembling it bit by bit. He's making his field. I think we're just seeing how consistent it is, to be honest. So, I mean, in the first game, Jesse's deck, you know, he was very unlucky with those dice rolls and it still assembled the pieces. And in this game... He, you know, he was shut off from three draws, and it, he's still going to assemble the combo. So here we see Toon Cannon Soldier, and now this is the combo game, because he can just tribute off the Mermaid, summon a Dark World, bounce for Graffa, and rinse and repeat. And it looks like Matthew's acknowledging that. So Jesse just showing 
and offering the handshake, and there it is. As mentioned, you said previously that he's got a really consistent um, ratio. He can really, really make and assemble that field quite consistently, and two games in a row, Toon Cannon Soldier. Toon Cannon Soldier. I mean, that is the deck's win condition. I think it's quite unlikely that he would win not doing that. So as we see, Jesse with a 2-0, straight off the bat with those, um, with that loop, if you like, that continuous it supply loop, of yeah. monsters and cannon soldier. The infinite damage. And soul charge in the first game, actually, because he didn't, he didn't start so well with the dice rolls in the first game, but he managed to continue um, the process and drawing. Yeah, drawing I think the soul, soul charge, charge was pretty clutch in the first game. I'm not sure, given the poor start, that he may have been able to continue uh, and assemble the pieces without drawing into Soul Charge or possibly Card Destruction to really give you that huge surge of advantage. And it and Matthew came came back a bit in the second game though with the trap. Yeah, he kind of. He that, kind that of was quite fun. He, yeah, he stopped the second <laughs> activation of the beginning of the end. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I think it took Jesse off. Um, it took him by surprise, but I think he was more than capable of. Indeed, continuing. continuing. So there we have it. Jesse Cotton takes the first round. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you with more shortly. Oh, we're going to continue talking. <laughs> <laughs> Until Ollie's ready with Jesse to interview him, I think. They're ready now. <laughs> and over to Ollie on the uh, stage area. It's a new thing for us as well this weekend. This is this is what happens when we do it live. But I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the show. We got so much other stuff planned for you. I can't wait to show you our running reporter Luke Withington, who's gonna be in the field, like right at the top tables, and give you some live updates of how the players are doing. Some of the super successful duelists are gonna be among them. One of them, of course, Jesse Cotton. Congratulations. So um, in the end, everything was uh, falling into place, so to speak. Yeah. They did mention that um, you weren't as lucky at the beginning of the duels. Uh, yeah. Uh, so game one, he hit three dangers in a row, which is fine. Like my hand was uh, playable still. Like it never made me dead. Uh, the one roll near the end of game one, where I had two, or I think I had brow snow or two brows, I don't remember, and then a dog man. If he had hit the dog man for the fourth time in a row, I would have lost. I probably would have. I wouldn't have lost, but I would have had to. Like think really deep. It would have been bad. I have to, it would have been way worse than than what happened. But uh, the second that hit, and I had a brow, I got to draw two cards. I, I, that was like, I was full function. But is that part of like your experience basically? Because other people, you, you say he hit like three in a row, something like that, and other players they then like mentally give up. And f I mean, you've been at the like highest levels of competition. What do you do to like stay in the zone and make sure that you're not giving up? I've played for a long time and I've been one of those players who have gotten, has beaten themselves up or gotten down and then lost because of it. And you just have to learn from your experiences, right? Like, now that it's happened to me, like so many times, I know that when it happens, I just got to push through it because it's even worse where if you feel bad, you stop paying attention and you lose even more when you could have won. Like, it just, it's rough. So the biggest thing is just, in the game in general, is uh, mental fortitude, staying positive and, and keeping in the game, not getting shaken. Uh, that is things that are very important while the tournament is underway. Uh, what did you do to prepare for this tournament this weekend? Um, I have a group of friends that I practice with, and that's pretty much it. Just, uh, I play I play a decent amount, and uh, I was at Wysis Niagara last weekend. That's in my two hours from where I live, so that was easy enough. All right. Um, it was the first ever event for Matthew. Um, he said this is the first time he's on the grand stage. Do you still remember what it was like for you when you were at your first event? Ooh, uh, <laughs> not too well. That was about seven years ago when it was my first YCS. But uh, it's scary. I, it is. Uh, definitely round one of your first tournament you're up on the, on the live stream. So just imagine, um, let's, let's basically take you that back. And uh, somebody would have told you seven years ago, hey, you're going to be a world championship competitor even back to back. Or you're going to like win a uh, large event like YCS London, for example. Is this something where you would have been like, yeah, of course, I'm going to do that. Or would you have been more like, I don't think so? I'm a pretty determined guy. If I want something, I'll work hard to get it. So I think it was something I wanted it back then. So I think I would have said, yeah, sure, down the line I will get it. 
because uh, when I want something, I work hard, I'll get it. Uh, but yeah, obviously it's different now to say, wow, I'm a YCS champion. It's so um, would that also be, um, if, if you're talking to somebody like Matthew and you're advising him how to, how to get to the top, basically, that would be your advice. Like, stay determined, set goals, work at it. Of course. Like, everyone's going to have different roads, right? Like, you got to work hard, you got to keep at it, don't give up. Like, my road to where I am now uh, in the game is not easy. It, I, I played a good 10 events YCSs before I made it to Top Cut. I went 9-3 and three or 8-3 and three at so many events, and that's rough because that's just, like, so close. Yeah. So I know what it's like, but you have to just push through, keep at it, and you'll get there. All right, push through, keep at it, you'll get there. Chelsea Cotton, one of the legends of the game. Good luck this weekend. Uh, now I can start rooting for you after that first feature match. Uh, you guys, we're going to be back very soon with yet another feature match. We're going to have updates in between rounds this weekend for the first time ever. And of course, we pre-recorded a lot of exciting content already or yesterday. So we're going to show you some of that pre-recorded content now. And then as soon as we're ready, we're going to be back with our round two feature match and continue the coverage of YCS London 2018.